thinking no one man should have all that power. The clock's ticking, I just count the hours. Stop tripping, I'm tripping off the powder. Till then, fuck that, the world's ours. Good day, you are watching a special edition of the Final Call News Hour. I'm your man, Herman Muhammad, and we're coming to you live from the brand new Devil on the Run Studios located at Supreme Style Barbershops, 5732 East Colfax Avenue here in Denver, Colorado. We have a uh, quick final call, 10 minutes if you will. Um, just some very powerful stories. This particular edition of the Final Call um, newspaper or news hour, we're going to come out of Volume number 30, issue number 10, as well as volume number... Deadly Diet is very, very, very crucial and important at this particular uh, hour in our history because we have a diet of death in America. And so this particular issue, and you need to pick it up, on page three, it starts with food, urban farms, and our survival. With blacks caught between no food and bad food, movement seeks to save lives. And this particular article is written by a sister, Starla Muhammad, and it deals with a brother by the name of Will Allen, who grows food on so-called urban farms in Milwaukee. And it's really an effort for us to change our diet, to change our eating habits to the point where we could eat to live. Of course, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that we should eat to live, not live to eat, and not live to or eat to die that what we put in our stomach keeps us here but it also will take us away from here if we eat the wrong food so eating to live and is very 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 important and by the way in this particular issue of the final call and every issue of the final call the honorable elijah muhammad's article and let me give you a picture of the most honorable elijah muhammad the most honorable elijah muhammad's article always appears on page 28 of each edition of the Final Call newspaper. In this particular issue, the article is entitled How to Keep Food from Hurting Us. And it's certainly on time in regards to the particular headline that we have uh, in respect to the Final Call. So pick up this particular edition of the Final Call and, and uh, let me let you look at this headline one more time because it's extremely crucial. If you haven't noticed, when you drive around our cities, especially if you're in the inner cities of Chicago and Detroit and St. Louis, all cities which I have visited, you will find that you don't have a lot of grocery stores. You have liquor stores, you have convenience stores, you have, uh, you might even have cigarette shops lining the streets of your local communities. But you don't find grocery stores with good, wholesome food. And that is because the enemies of our rise don't desire for us to have a good life. They don't desire for us to eat the way that we should eat. They desire for us death. So they've styled for us not a lifestyle, but a death style that includes the foods that we eat. So you'll find McDonald's on every corner, Wendy's, Murder King, uh, KFC, Toxic Hell, or pardon me, Taco Bell. You'll find all of these different so-called restaurants in your communities, but you're dying. So again, pick up this particular edition of the Final Call um, newspaper, and that article again appears on page three, written by Sister Starla Muhammad. The next piece before we get to the next issue of the Final Call um, newspaper is something that's been burning on my mind. I just want to take a few minutes just to talk to you about it. Um, in our community, we have certain people who tell certain stories. And what I'm referring to is filmmakers. And one of the hottest movies out 
right now is a movie entitled For Color Girls. And this particular film was a play that was adapted by our brother who is a filmmaker, a producer, an actor. A It was, it, it was adapted from this particular uh, play called For Colored Girls Who've Considered Suicide When the Rainbow Is Enough or something like that. Now, I went and saw this movie For Colored Girls. And, um, you know, I have to say, it was a very powerful film, but very depressing. And like I said, I'm not going to go in on Tyler Perry, even though I'm not fond of any black man who rolls around wearing a dress. Because he's a terrific filmmaker, like I said, and he, he employs thousands of people in Atlanta with his film studio, and he produces these sort of stories. But it gives me pause when I see this type of movie being produced and adapted for the big screen by a black man. Why? It gives me pause because all of the male characters, all the black male characters in this particular movie, and as you can see, it stars Kerry Washington, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Janet Jackson, uh, Dandy Newton, uh, Felicia Rashad, you know, beautiful, beautiful actresses. But all of the men who were in this particular movie, film were very negative caricatures of black men. And this is important, man. This is important to note because these images are not just shown to, uh, they're not just shown to black people here in America. They're not just shown to white people in America. They're shown all over the world. And in this particular film, it was, it was very disturbing because one black man was a uh, uh, in the closet homosexual who gave, who gives his wife HIV one black man was a baby murderer who murdered both of his children one black man was a, who appeared to be a kind generous decent brother but it turns out that he was a violent rapist one black man who they never even showed they just talked about him he was married to Whoopi Goldberg's character, but he actually uh, prostituted his wife out to a white man so that he could have lighter skinned babies so that he could later rape them in life, right? And the only positive uh, black role model in this whole entire picture was the police. And the police, of course, is chasing all the rest of the no good Negroes. So uh, it, it, it's worth seeing on video if you just want to see some good acting some dramatic some dramatic uh you know acting if you will however man I, it just gives me pause it makes me wonder about tyler perry and his motivation for bringing this sort of uh film to the screen he could have told any story he could have told any story. It, it gives me pause. It makes me wonder about his background and about who he really is because he likes to run around wearing a dress. Like I said, he, he, could pay, he got enough money to make somebody else wear the dress, but he still chooses to wear the dress. But uh, that's neither here nor there. It's the negative images of black men that are most concerning in this film. So, I just had to give my little two cents about it. I hope y'all ain't mad at a brother for letting you know his thoughts on this particular film. So, we'll jump right into the next uh, edition of The Final Call, which is, again, like I said, volume number 30, issue number 11.
And uh, let me just read the first paragraph. The idea of a so-called post-racial America was widely discussed, debated, and even seen as an achievement by some with Barack Obama's inauguration as president of the United States. For blacks in Greenwood, Mississippi, the notion that America has gotten beyond race isn't popular today. Many are angry over the recent mysterious hanging death of Frederick Germain Carter. Um, this is 2010 and we still have black people hanging from trees. They're saying he hung himself, but I doubt in my mind that he actually did that. That wasn't his character. This wasn't suicide. This was a homicide, said Sunflower, Mississippi Mayor Michael Pimbleton, Jr. Michael Pimbleton Jr. to the final call. The body of Mr. Carter, Mr. like I said, his name is Frederick Germain Carter, was found December 3rd hanging from an oak tree in the predominantly white North Greenwood area of Lafleur County. The young man lived in neighboring Sunflower County, located several miles away. Now, of course, they're still doing the investigation into this young brother's um, death, but it, like the article points out, this is a very sad notion that we live in this so-called post-racial America, and they're still hanging brothers up in trees, man. And the thing about it is they're saying this was an apparent suicide, but none of this young man's family uh, said that he was having any sort of problems that would indicate that he would even that he would even contemplate suicide. Um, the other strange thing is he's, the tree that he was found hung on is in an all white area of Mississippi. Now we don't have to go into the history of Mississippi to know that they like to hang black people. You see what I'm saying? So we, we have to be especially diligent and especially mindful of the time and the places that we live. And even though Barack Obama is president, man, everything ain't good for black folks. You know, we know that. So that th th those are just a few stories that you need to pick up in these latest editions of The Final Call. Um, again, this is a... Again, this is an abbreviated version of the Final Call News Hour, Hanging Death in Mississippi. Um, Frederick Jermaine Carter found dead. Look out for that story. And this particular, this other issue, the one that preceded that one, is America's, Urban America's Deadly Diet. And, uh, man, just, just pick these things up. Look, like I stated before, you could pick these issues up at Supreme Style. 5732 um, East Colfax, or you could pick them up at our Respect for Life bookstore at 1440 Iola Street. This is uh, one of the many publications that we have at our local bookstore here in Denver, which is also the place where we um, study the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad under the leadership of our local representative, Brother Corey, to X, the brother so nice they had to X him twice, who's also an executive producer of the Final Call News Hour. So pick up those editions. And let me say this, too, before we get out of here, this, this particular issue of the Final Call News Hour has, is being brought to you, of course, by yours truly, Herman Muhammad, and the new Supreme Styles located at 5732 East Colfax Avenue. And, of course, we are followers of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we forever thank Allah and his messenger for bringing to us or giving to us the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And without both of these individuals, this show would not be possible. So 